Hey guys, welcome back to another Sippy Paint. Hi, what's up? I'm going to talk about something controversial today. And I'm not sorry. But before I start, let's talk a little bit a little bit about this art. I just want to say something. Um, if you see like the first few seconds, she has a bunch of tattoos. And I guess at some point, something happened to that lady or I moved her or something. And all the tattoos disappeared and I didn't notice and nobody noticed. And I'm upset, so I'm redrawing, not redrawing, but I'm fixing it and adding tattoos to it. So when you click on Instagram, it might be exactly the same or it might be in the future. And I already added all the tattoos because I feel like it's lacking. And the worst part is towards the end, when I finished this and, uh, and like the next day I was posting, I was like, why didn't I draw more tattoos? I, I feel like I could have drawn more tattoos. I did draw more tattoos. I just don't know what happened to me. I completely forgot that they were there and I just went with it. So weird. Trust your gut. <laughs> but anyways, what we're talking about today, if you saw the title, is something that um, I know is a little controversial. And I, I, I don't, I, I, I was going to say I don't like talking about controversial stuff here, but that's a lie. Um, but I was saying, like, for me today, it's like June 30, so it's like last day of june june is all about pride pride is amazing but if you're hearing me click i'm sorry <laughs> i just have like a few little stuff there um that i might not even look at but yeah i just wanted to talk about like why i think it's important to teach children about the lgbtq plus community you know as children and i'm not gonna tell you like any specifics because as I said, like, I feel like if, if you don't know anything about this, you should just Google it, educate yourself. Like, if I were to explain every single thing, like, about Pride and how it started, about all of that, it would be, like, an hour video, and I'm not going to do that. But I just want to tell you, like, in my personal experience, why knowing about this as a child would have changed my life, and how not knowing about this actually is what I think triggered m my anxiety early on because I suffer from a lot of anxiety I um I just there's a lot like that I can attribute to things in my past and, I, and and sometimes like you think like hey I wonder like what in my childhood triggered me to you know be this this specific type of person and I've been thinking like, about a bunch of things um I feel like I've been thinking a lot about horrible things that happened to me and all that and I've been like just you know not in a good place because I I started like remembering things I forgot about but that's not what I'm talking about today I'm going to talk about like a very specific moment in my life that I think is the first time I ever had anxiety and I remember it very vividly and and you can tell like because I don't remember a lot of stuff about my childhood like like I remember general things but not very specific things um but there's like this moment that I can there are a few moments in my life that if I sit down I can just even feel like how I felt them like if I was cold I remember I was cold I remember what it smelled like I remember like the ambiance you know it's like so vivid and I feel like those are the moments that mark your life for example one of those moments for me is when I had my accident in sixth grade I if you don't know I had an accident when I was in sixth grade I got burned by sulfuric acid my legs my arm my neck uh, maybe one day I'll make a video about it I've tried making a video about it before but it really like last time I tried I wanted to like have a timeline of events because I feel like the best way to make that video would be a timeline of events and I was supposed to talk to my mom to, you know, clear up the timeline. Since she was an adult back then, she has maybe a more clearer um, idea of the timeline. But the point is, it got me like a re really dark place. I got super sad. I, I just remember a lot of feelings and, you know, bad things. And it just brought me to a black place where I, I paused making that video. But anyways, um, this, what I'm going to talk about happened in seventh grade. So a year after I had... The accident so I was already very vulnerable um, I it was I mean maybe if I talked about the accident you would have more context about like how fragile I was when I was in seventh grade well how old I was I like 13 14 which are already like pretty awkward years 
of um, teenaging, teen, teenagers, um, you know, and I want to like first start with how I was raised because I think this story won't make any sense unless you know how I was raised. And I was raised strictly Catholic. I come from a Catholic family. Um, my dad has dabbled in like evangelism and used to take me to like the temple and all that stuff. I never enjoyed it. I never enjoyed church either. Um, but I used to go to church every Sunday. Um, my school, even though it was technically not a Catholic school, um, was pretty Catholic. Um, we had religion class. Um, we, we had like once a month we had mass on Mondays. Um, I, at that point, seventh grade, I had done my first communion. So it was just like, I was very strictly Catholic. And with it, I just didn't know a lot about, you know, LGBTQ plus community. I knew basically nothing. I knew what gay, being gay was. I knew what being a lesbian was. And I knew what being trans was, but like not, not very well. Like I basically just had, had no idea um, to be, to be like, just to show you how ignorant I, I was raised in this topics i thought only hairdressers were gay like there were not like because every single gay man i had ever encountered was a hairdresser um which which is a lie because later on in life i would learn that that's not true i encountered tons of gay people i just didn't know because it was you know early 2000s and maybe not as frowned upon as in other times but like where i lived and in my family it was um i had I knew what a lesbian was technically, but I, outside of like TV shows, I think the L word was like a show that um, was a thing at that time. And I also remember Buffy being like the first time I knew what a lesbian was. Like, oh my God, what is this? And um, and the only uh, like only thing I knew about trans people was that I had a hairdresser that was a trans woman. But, you know, I grew around very um, close-minded people. So everyone always just told me that, you know, that was a gay man and not a trans woman. So it was not, I didn't know a lot. So um, the idea of being into someone of the same sex for me was kind of like a sin. That's what I grew around, like people teaching me that was a sin. Like you shouldn't hate them. You shouldn't attack them, but they're they're going to hell. They're definitely going to hell. That's the kind of um, teachings I got. Not that much from my parents, if I'm being honest. Most of it was from school. Like my parents never really talked to me about it. It was what I learned from school, and not only what I learned from my teachers, but what I learned from my peers. Um, it was bad. They were going to hell, um, which is so stupid. Um, and let me tell you about this story, which is what um, I'm here to talk about. I thought like that content was important for you to understand why my mind, my mind went there. So um, I remember it was seventh grade. I was sitting in the back of the classroom with my best friend at that time. Which I think she wasn't my best friend yet. I think she became my best friend later. But she was like my friend. Um, and I don't know other people. And this boy came over and asked my friend if she thought Amy Lee from Evanescence was hot and in my mind I was like of course she's hot she's super hot um, and my friend answered and this words marked me for years to come I mean I think she's pretty but I'm not a lesbian so no and in my mind you know little 70 seventh grade camps like 13 14 year old camps thought oh my god i think she's hot i'm a lesbian and then like panic ensued like the only thing i could think about for weeks was that i liked girls i was going to hell and i could never tell anyone because they would shame me and let me tell you i'm I like I'm, I'm 28 years old now i'm not a lesbian i know that but still remembering like how i felt in that moment um, it just fucked me up so much and I remember staying up at night and just having like I, I couldn't breathe and all that because I, I've been raising like this idea that oh my god hell is bad I'm gonna go to hell 
this is horrible how how could this happen to me and i had like this little um like comfort sometimes when i was like okay but like you can't be a lesbian because you have a crush on a boy and you think this guy is attractive and this guy is attractive because in my mind being attracted to two or more genders was not a thing like bi's pants what is that never had heard of that term i didn't i didn't even i don't think i even knew about that until i was in high school maybe maybe i'm not 100 sure so like i was um i was just like oh my god like my my life was so horrible and i i would and i would go to church and it would all i would think about and i, I had done my first communion in second grade so by the time that was like when you did the thingy where you like take the little wafer wafer i don't know what you call that in english and i would be like i can't do it because i would have to confess my sins to the priest and i, I would have to tell him that i like girls and what if he tells someone like i know priests are not supposed to tell anyone but what if he tells my mother and i was so scared of everything And it was just horrifying. And I see like that little girl who was so confused and just knew nothing. And I feel bad. And I think I never had like a panic attack. I never had a panic attack back then. Like I have them now. Like I've had panic attacks, you know, as an adult where it's so bad that I have to go to the emergency room because I need oxygen. But I, I do think that my roots of anxiety all started there. Like, and that's the thing how was i supposed to know that finding a girl attractive has nothing to do with your sexuality you can be straight you can be a straight woman and think another girl is attractive like there's not and you can be a straight man and think another man is attractive and you can be as you can think everyone is attractive and not be a sexual thing and not be like a romantic thing and not wanting to be in a rel relationship with them You can think your best friend is attractive and that's it. It's your best friend and they're attractive and that's it. Because, you know, the world is not black and white. Um, the world is beautiful and sometimes horrible shades of gray. And I just, I've always thought like maybe if instead of teaching me like um, abortion is bad and um, abstinence is the best birth control in health class, they would have taught us about sexuality and all the different sexualities you can be in all the beautiful lgbtq plus things and I, i would have never gone through that because i would have been like oh that's it's fine there's nothing wrong with me and even if i had you know um be, be gone to the conclusion once again that i was either a lesbian or bisexual or whatever i wouldn't have a panic attack because i wouldn't have seen it like an abomination because that's how i saw it like i thought i saw it as an abomination so that's why that's my little story on why i think you should teach children um about the lgbtq plus community and maybe let them decide for themselves if because we live in a society where, where it is straight onto proven otherwise and it shouldn't be like that because why that makes no sense you should be nothing until you decide or you find out what you like right And I just think about not only like, you know, kids who are gay or anything like that. I also think about like the ace kids. Like imagine growing up in a society that teaches us that like we want sex and we want relationships and we want to have a significant other and not feeling any of that or just feeling part of that. You know, maybe you, you only feel the romantic part, but you don't want to, you know have sex with them and that's fine and i i think like it's horrible that they don't teach this to children because i feel like maybe if we did learn those things we would be like so much secure and more like confident growing up and not feel like we're horrible or monsters or whatever because i know i felt like that And then now I'm like, I oh, that was so stupid, but like, was it? Because how was I supposed to know? Now I'm just repeating myself, but it's just like thinking back on like how much I suffered for something so dumb. Because now, now sitting here, I know like thinking a girl is attractive is not, does not make you a lesbian immediately. It just opens up possibilities, but it doesn't mean anything, especially like a celebrity. <laughs> Amy Lee was fucking beautiful. Yes, she's not that is 
very beautiful and I still think that and I, I it's also like not my friend's fault by the way like my friend said that but like she had been raised pretty much the same as me I think like just thinking you know being a lesbian is wrong being gay is wrong so it's not her fault either but like her words traumatized me and I never told this to anyone um, until I was an adult <laughs> it took me being an adult to be like hey I remember this thing happened wow that was fucked up because I think at one point I just repressed it and just started acting like it wasn't a thing that ever happened and I was normal there was nothing weird with me and I do remember like being very um, anti-gay when I was a preteen starting my teenage years I was like just really anti you know all of that and then one day I just you know I started reading and I started learning and I, I, I met like <laughs> wow my age I met this guy on on MySpace and he was gay and he was so nice and so sweet and we became friends and I was like you know I think what they thought taught us was wrong and then you know I just Google stuff and there was tons of people saying, you know, don't believe the church because blah, blah, blah. And then I also found out uh, like there's tons of Christians who are like, yeah, that's stupid. Being gay has nothing wrong. You can be a Christian and be gay and shit like that. And I'm not a Christian anymore. Like I'm not a Catholic. I don't, I don't believe in religion like that. Um, so all of that, I think sophomore year, I was like, I don't, I don't care for religion anymore kind of mindset i think most of us well not maybe not most of us but i know a huge group of people in my school went through like that rebellious phase of oh my god i don't believe in religion i'm not a catholic anymore and people like around us saw it like we were heathens or something i don't know but um yeah it's just so weird to think that i would have been spared all that pain and all that you know nights not sleeping because i was scared i was gonna go to hell and you know it's not that i was raised like it's still not a good way to be raised by the way like that whole idea of love the sinner hate the sin or is it hate the sinner love the, hate the sin love the sinner did i say that right i don't know but you get what i mean like just i feel like a lot of christians catholics have this idea like we have to love them because they're humans but we have to teach them the right way and the right way is being straight so um i just you know maybe if your school isn't teaching kids this teach your own children i mean nothing but it's not brainwashing you know why it's not brainwashing and you know why this is not gonna make your kid gay because there's tons and tons of lgbtq plus people who grew up learning that straight was the way and guess what they didn't turn out straight did they so like the reverse is not gonna buy your straight kid is not gonna become like bisexual because they learned about it in school they're just gonna probably if they are gonna grow up and not think they're horrible or there's something wrong with them or they're going to hell and i think at this point i'm just getting repetitive and i'm getting heated up and i'm getting extra heated up because i have my fine off and i'm sweating but she's you know be more open teach your kids your kids are so smart kids can be so smart if you teach them and you know how i know that because my six-year-old niece understands that wearing a fucking face mask is important and everyone should be doing it and she hates that people are not doing it and you know if a six-year-old can understand that you have to go outside and wear a face mask and a fucking adult can that means kids are way smarter than adults give them credit for and I just think that if we taught them about this topic, they will, you know, not only grow up to be more confident in themselves, just in case, you know, they're not straight, like they're meant to be or whatever idea that is. That's so dumb. Um, but also, they will grow up to be more accepting and they will grow up and be better people and be a better generation because you need because home is where learning starts and we learn all of our bad behaviors at home and at school so if someone is a racist they probably learned it from someone because nobody's born a racist if someone is homophobic they probably learned it from someone because nobody is born like that nobody is born with hate and 
just give your kids a chance you know because they're really smart and i don't know if any of you have kids i don't know if anyone is listening to me at this point because it's 20 minutes in and i'm just repeating myself but you know for 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 all those kids you know that are having a hard time and they're gonna have a hard time one day just just teach them it's not that hard either like oh my god stop teaching kids that um what's the word in english oh my god i just forgot and i said it earlier abstinence stop teaching kids that abstinence is the way and start teaching them things that are useful because teaching kids that abstinence is not the way it's not helpful at all okay they're still gonna have sex just stop thinking that they're not gonna have it because you tell them that it's just them okay um we have an understanding okay i'm sorry if this is like super weird and repetitive as i said i didn't look at any of my notes on this because i don't know it, this all came from the heart <laughs> but have a good day and i'm sorry if you don't agree but i'm not sorry and you're wrong <laughs> okay thanks bye